EEAP safety presentation. I'm Rick Roman. And uh, Michael Crawley. Michael Crawley. Today we have a special guest in studio with us. Oh. Our general manager and chief inspector, Sam, is here with us. Uh, go ahead and say hi to all your fans out there, Sam. Hello, all my fans out there. He does have a lot of fans, Rick. Let me tell you, out there, they <laughs> love Sam Crawley, the general manager. Problem solver, extraordinary. So today we are going to be talking about ladder safety. And uh, as always, I will remind you that, uh, that if you have any questions along the way, go ahead and type those in. You do not have to wait till the end, but we will answer the questions at the end of the presentation. So let's go ahead and get started. So some of the things we're going to be going over, we're going to be talking about the proper use of ladders, uh, proper securement, proper storage when fall protection is required. We're also going to go over some common violations along the way and some creatively dangerous uses of ladders that you see out there sometimes. Not too bad. Whoa, Rick. So, due to the fact of a, a, a lot of injuries and even deaths resulting from uh, ladder accidents and uh, most of the fall-related accidents that, that come in uh, are as a result of ladder accidents. And uh, so OSHA had to enact certain regulations aimed at uh, the design and use of ladders to, to help keep employees safe out there. Any comments on that, Michael? Well, that is not a picture of a real dead guy. Let's make sure that that's clear out there. But you can see how his foot got hung up into that and uh, tied him up. So you got to be careful of that. Okay. So the first part of ladder safety is making sure that you select the, the correct ladder and, and use it for its intended purposes. Uh, Michael, if you could go over some of the various ladders there and the types that people use for the different jobs. Well, when we were kids, me and Sam actually are brothers for those out there that don't know. When me and Sam were kids, we would go and donate some of our time to a peach farm. We would go out to this peach farm and pick and prune peaches for this nonprofit organization. And this ladder on your far left was that ladder. Many days, Sam, we spent throwing uh, thinned peaches, throwing them at each other, didn't we, Sam? Uh, that was a good time. Yeah, uh, that was good times. Lots of, uh, lots of headshots. With the, yes, the headshots were deadly, Sam, deadly. But you will notice that on that ladder, you got to make sure you don't tilt too far to the left or the right, dodging those peaches or you'd fall off. And that was probably very unsafe in our unsafer days. But you see a, a whole host of ladders that you've got going on there. And uh, the picture, do you ever see that kind of picture, that stuff going on, Sam, when you're out there in the field? Um, I, I see this all the time. Uh, people, um, they, they're just getting it. They need to get their job done. Uh, so they do it, what it takes to get the job done. Um, but it's typically not very safe. No, nope, whatever um, it takes to get the job done, that's what they do. Yeah, so I see it out there all the time. All right, Rick. Okay, so, you, so depending on the type of job, of course, you've got different types of of materials that the ladders are, are made of, from metal to fiberglass to wood, and, yep. and of course you want to use something that's not conductive if you're working with electricity and so forth. So, uh, you know, so you, you want to make sure the proper ladder for the job. Uh, one of the other things we see out there all the time are the A-frames, mm -hmm. uh, and they're using the A-frames as ext extension ladders. Yes, 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 they're, they're, they're not opened up all the way. That's a problem. That's a problem. That, 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 Rick, is that going to be in some slides as we go forward with some of the pictures, Rick? Well, yeah, you'll, you'll okay. see some examples of some of these, how they're not being properly used here. So the next thing is, is the labels. Your ladders will usually have labels on there that'll give you rings uh, of the weight capacities, how far they can be extended, uh, cautions for... Uh, keeping three points of contact and so forth. So you want to make sure that you're not overloading your ladders like you see this truck here that's overloaded Rick, and that you're facing forward. Rick, I'm jumping in here. What in the world are we looking at with that truck, Rick? I, 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 what the crap is that? <laughs> well, that's a, a, a severely overloaded vehicle. With I, I'm not sure what exactly that is that's on there, but that's, that's just an example of, of using something beyond it. It's a uh, tended capacity. Uh, I see. Well, let me tell you, that is absolutely ridiculous. Um, if you see that coming down the street, you're going to want to give it ample room, I would imagine. But I think you'd have to be somewhere in another country to be able to see that. 
Yes. Uh, when we're looking at this slide, just notice a couple things. You see the guy in the far upper right corner of the screen where he's carrying everything and his hands are all over the place? I know you guys do this all the time. You got you got to make sure you stop it. You got to get a helper or somebody to hand something up to you while you get up there. And you can't be standing on the top of the ladders. This is just going to be absolutely insane. One last thing about this slide is it's going to be the labeling. You see that one in the middle that talks about the poundage? You want to be making sure that your ladders have these proper labels on it. Talking about the manufacturer, what the ratings are, when they were manufactured. These kind of things are going to help us so we, we stop OSHA citations. And so make sure your labels are on your ladders are in good condition. That's a good point because in addition to having injuries with the employees, the citations come into play and uh, I'm, we'll get in a little bit more about some of the citations that you see come across and, and, and how pricey they can be. So the other thing is, is that you got to make sure that you're inspecting and uh, doing repairs on your ladders. Uh, you don't want to use ladders that are bent and have damaged rungs or show signs of excessive wear and tear. And you want to keep them uh, clean and, and free of debris from uh, any type of oil substances or in, in the case that you see in the lower right where it has ice on there, you know, that would need to be knocked off before someone's attempting to use it. Uh, people storing their tools like the picture in the middle. Um, any comments about things they might need to do in, in the inspection process to make sure their ladders are, are safe. Well, my first question, Rick, is, Sam, how often do we see these ladders that are damaged out there like this? Uh, we see them uh, pretty often, uh, pretty often. Uh, there's um, there, there's a lot of ladders out there, um, and um, uh, we see damage on these things a lot. Uh, typically, the, the top... Uh, uh, the top of the ladders a lot of times is where the damage is. Uh, okay. um, holding the, especially on A-frames, where it's holding them together at the top. And they um, get they get pretty creative on how to fix these dang things, don't they, Sam? They do, yeah. Uh, we've seen all, all type of things, wires wrapped around things, yeah. uh, nails, um, large screws, uh, even, uh, even duct tape. Not duct tape. Duct tape you can do anything with, Rick, right? <laughs> Yes. You could babysit your children with duct tape to a certain degree. You could, uh, you could make a plane out of duct tape. You could make a plane out of duct tape. As we digress here, let me just make sure you're clear that you can't repair the ladders. You cannot repair the ladders. You really, they're just not worth it to you. You just want to get rid of them. If the, lammers da the ladder's damaged, you just got to get rid of it. Okay, now we want to talk a little bit about ladder placement and making sure that you have it on a, a secure foundation. Uh, slippery surfaces or uneven surfaces. Uh, they, as you can see, uh, some of these ladders uh, show extensions and apparatuses that you can connect to them uh, to make sure that you can to offset for that uneven ground. This is a problem that will hit us on citations afterwards. Your employees will not open the A-frames like Sam had just talked about a few minutes ago. You see a number of pictures here with uneven surfaces on the bottom right and the top left. And some of the solutions that are out there that you can deal with to make sure you get that if you are finding that to be a common trend. But I need you to know that if you don't find that problem and you don't have an, an option for them, your employees are going to do something, as we called in my family growing up, a bit ski wampus. And if they do that, they're going to fall, they're going to get hurt, and then we're going to pay the price for it, not just on their health, but on workers' comp premiums and, and OSHA citations. It's just going to get real, real, real bad. Um, the guy hanging from his hands up there, it's ridiculous, Rick, but it happens more than you would believe. It, it does happen more than you'd believe. Yes, sir. Any I, uh, comments on that, Sam? Yeah, I, I think it's important to say that uh, the ladders, um, especially as the ones you see here, um, really should be used uh, the way the manufacturer intended them to be used. Yeah. Uh, I, I think that's pretty important to say. Yeah, um, yeah. So if they're altering things and making their own designs, um, that's, that's a bad deal. They just need to make sure they use them as intended. Yep, yep. And a lot of these things... You know, some of you guys that are using ladders every day as part of your job uh, are things that you might already be aware of and are doing. But, you know, ladders is just one of those things, whether it's actually part of your job function or not. I'm, I'm, almost everybody has a ladder in, in an office or in any type of setting where your employees are potentially going to have to get up there to change a light bulb or do something. And so you just want to make sure that, you know, that you're doing these things. You see the caution tape there. Um, you, you know, either to use something, a lot of times you, you have to put the ladder in a place where there's going to be a lot of tr foot traffic. 
and you want to make sure people aren't going to be walking into it. So you want to use some sort of barricade or something to prevent people from walking into it, knocking it out from under you. Excellent point, Rick. Excellent point. Okay. Now uh, we'll let Michael get into more and Sam here from what he sees out in the field about ladder securement because this is this part here gets a little bit tricky. So, um, Michael, why don't you go ahead and take it away on this one? All right, let me talk about the bottom pictures real quick. You're, you're seeing the securing of what's going on down there. The bottom picture is a bracket that can be secured onto the rafters from underneath. And this is, uh, th this is something very easy to do. Uh, you can see on the top one, the, the, the one to the right on the bottom row, he's got a little bit of a U brace that comes around that gives a little bit more stability to the roof and pulls you off the, the, the rain gutters of the house, and then a rope that comes across the top. That rope is what is securing the ladder down, and that might be tied onto a tree over the house. It might be tied onto a chimney. It might be tied onto an anchoring port, a port point somewhere that, that makes it so it's locked, stocked, and barreled. So um, the pictures on the top, uh, these are uh, ladders of, of typically um, people working on roofs. Um, they have um, the uh, the hooks that they're actually putting into the eaves yep. um, of the roof. Uh, these uh, are pretty good. Uh, only problem with these a lot of times is uh, nobody wants to actually damage the uh, property or, or the eaves that they're trying to climb uh, onto the roof with. Does seem to be a problem, Sam. Yeah. Um, but uh, that is an option, of course, um, making sure these things are secure, throwing a line over the top of the roof, of course, uh, like Michael had said. And I, I want to say, Sam, the, the picture on the top left, that that is probably a picture of what not to do because you have a tile ledge on that, and that makes it very, very difficult to tie off. Um, I would agree with that. I would agree with that. So this might be an option where you have something that protects the ladder on the tile roof, like some sort of padding, but then you tie off to something on the other side. Yes. So a, a question that I've heard often is if people ask, you know, what are they supposed to do initially? Uh, how how do, how does somebody go about you know getting up? The, they got to get up there to secure it, and so so what's what are you asking? You're asking the, how do we secure it in the first place if it's not secured? Well, you, somebody's got to go up the ladder the yeah. first time without it being secured. Well, you do, and that's why usually on a job site, let's hope you have more than one guy. You know, somebody holds the bottom. You can see in the picture on the bottom right, there's two guys are on the job site. One guy perceived hopefully held the ladder for the guy to make sure it's good to go and secured it ideally. If you don't have the second guy, then you don't have any tools in your hand. You're going up there to secure the ladder, and you are being extremely safe. That, that is the problem that you face. All right. All right. On the next slide here, you can see a bit of a storage area uh, of how we like the ladders to be stored in facilities or whatnot. Some of them are a, bit, a little bit extreme because they have thousands of ladders, it looks like. Some are easier. But the chain across them is good. Laying them on their side is good. I do prefer them to be in a spot where they don't tip over or if they're standing straight up, they won't fall over or slip. But you just do your best to make sure they're secured in a fashion where they won't be dis displaced. All right, windfall protection is required. What kind of common things do you see out there in the job site in this kind of arena, Sam? What is the major problem? Uh, so uh, if you look at the picture on the left side starting there, um, you see you have some painters up here. This is a problem uh, that uh, I see out in the field all the time. Uh, how, how do the painters secure their ladders uh, when there's really nothing to secure to? Um, for instance, uh, the guy on the left. Even though he is using uh, two ladders, uh, one strapped to the other, which is a little insane. Mm -hmm. it's a um, violation in itself. Yeah, uh, but aside from that, um, that's, uh, that's what we see a lot of the issues. Uh, nothing to tie off to. So when it comes directly to the knot to being able to tie off to something, you understand that if somebody gets injured on a ladder that is not tied off, if you either had the opportunity to tie off or even failed to do it, or there was legitimately nothing to tie off to. If somebody is injured, the company will still get an OSHA citation and you still will have your workers' comp benefits taxed. And so that still is going to happen. So you, when somebody climbs a ladder like this, you just cannot say, well, there's nothing I can do. We got to leave it alone. You'll see in that picture, obviously, he's got three or four ladders strapped together, which is insane. But there is a guy at the bottom trying to do something. But on a ladder like this, it might not be the right choice to use that ladder. Now, there are probably better circumstances that would prove the point that Sam is trying to make. 
sometimes there's just no way you can tie off reasonably. You might turn a $1,000 job into a $40,000 job because you need $40,000 worth of scaffolding going all over the place. So you got to make sure you're using the right tool for the right job and get creative. If you are in a spot where you don't know what to do to tie off, you're going to call us. Jock, shockingly enough, Sam is everywhere at the same time in the field. Today, we're blessed to have him in the office so that he can give us some insights on some things. But the reality of it is we are usually have somebody close to you that can give you some expert advice, and that's what you pay us for, that we can come out and just give you some expert advice on what you could do in that circumstance. Why don't you talk a little bit about the difference and what what changes when somebody is using the ladder, for instance, with this guy who a guy is trying to get up on the roof versus the painter who's actually working from from that point on the, on the ladder? Well, you're speaking of two different issues, Rick. You're speaking of a ladder and having them tied off. But now we're getting into is the ladder uh, 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 how to get somewhere or is the ladder a work platform? So the guy on the dead center of it with the, with the harness on, he's using his ladder for a work platform to either repair that edge of the roof or whatnot. The guy on the far right is in that same spot. So the question becomes, these people are more than six feet up off the ground. Thus, they need fall protection. So if you put aside the fact the ladders are not secured, these people must be tied off in a fashion to prevent them from falling. Now, that probably is your, your biggest problem right there that you have in these photos, which gets into a fall protection conversation. But just to get into it for a second, you got to make sure they're tied off in some fashion. And, and that might be strapping on to the other side, coming over the top of the house and anchoring something over there. you got to get creative with what you do. Maybe he, you've got a, something tied off on a tree on the other side, but you got a yo-yo on it so that as he moves, it works with him. But if it ever goes tight, it hits like your seatbelt does. Okay. So we'll take a look here. We've got these uh, oh. some pictures here of some some crazy things that people try to do with their ladders. Uh, can kind of point out some violations in this and and some of the things that we're seeing out there. Um, but before we get into that, real quick, Michael, we'll talk about you know the 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 cost of the of, of the citations that you see for these types of violations uh, we're gonna have a series of pictures that I know you're doing out there I know you guys are riding a, a, a Vespa with a ladder around your head as you go down the five freeway I know you guys out there doing it. obviously that's not what we're doing but you gotta know that fines coming from falling off of ladders are looking somewhere around seven to twenty thousand dollars if it is an employee who, who is by himself and he just does something astronomically against policy and does it on his own deal, that's going to be in the $1,000 to $7,000 range. If it is an employee that was given no other way to do a job and he got hurt and clearly the management didn't give him any other suggestions, then it could be upwards to a $20,000 problem because he's getting hurt on it and it'd be accident related. Okay, yeah, so they get they get pretty pricey. And, and so, me and Sam, not to cut you off, Rick, me and Sam see all the time the the guys in the top left, right, Sam? I mean, guys leaning over the edge way, way outside the ladder. Yeah, uh, we, we see this all the time in the inspections. Um, even, even the guy on the uh, right side, uh, we see things like this all the time, not as often as the guys on the right. Um, but, yeah, uh, you got to make sure that uh, your guys are trained and they know that they shouldn't be doing things like this. Uh, because um, you may think that they don't, but people do this all the time. Yep, yep. And by the way, if, if you've got any questions, now would be a good time to start submitting them, and we'll be answering questions here shortly. So so here's another one with the guy on the left using uh, using some planks of wood to with other ladders to in a stairway. What You see that out there? Um, you do, and uh, this, uh, this comes into another um, issue of uh, using your tools the way they were intended to be used. Yeah. And um, that on the uh, left side, uh, that's just uh, that's just crazy. Um, but uh, people do it all the time, uh, especially when you get to smaller jobs where you've had to uh, underbid somebody to get it and you don't have a lot of money for it. The guy using it as some sort of uh, scaffolding on the right side, um, that, that's pretty common too. Um, and in the same situations. Yeah. Um, maybe not that high, but uh, yeah, um, in, in this guy on the left, uh, yeah, that, it's just a bit crazy. 
<laughs> wow, that is dangerous. Let me tell you, he, he's over a stairwell, leaning over on a scaffolding. Of course, his buddy's holding it with his with his fingertips. That that makes it all better, of course. But the reality of it is, this guy's going down, and when he does, uh, he's not going to be able to go and do his work tomorrow. But the guy on the right, my gosh, you got to give him an a, 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 you know uh, some credit for trying. That is just really bold. I don't have that kind of courage in my life uh, to do I, that kind of a thing. I do not either. Uh, and it's uh, it's an A-frame as well. I didn't notice that it was an A-frame before. It's an A-frame. And, and, and when we're talking about this, just know, I know you're sitting in your office going like this. Man, I used to do something like that. I used to uh, put a ladder in a, in, a, in a front loader and lift me up to an electrical pole. All right, maybe that one's a bit of a stretch. But the one on the right, I've seen some of you guys do that. Those gardeners out there, I know you've done things like this to give a, to give a bush. We have a lot of these gardeners down in the Hollywood area and where they have big, big, jumbo hedges like this they crawl on top of them they're walking on top of them they get these these ladders that shouldn't be going that high to stack them up top and you fall off and you realize you know people just don't bounce that well we just don't bounce that well even my size i don't bounce that well yeah and the uh the small sticks in the hedges don't uh, don't bend very easy no they don't bend they kind of harpoon you at times well huh? here's here's one with a guy in some sort of pool and he's got a drill to boot Oh yeah, that is uh, that is a genius. Uh, but I especially do like the guy on the left. Um, uh, he does have three or four guys holding him straight up, though. And let me <laughs> tell you, that is gutsy. That is really, really gutsy. That shows a uh, interesting combination of guts and stupidity. Yes. All right, pictures like this of people having a lot of ladders and just coming across from them. You see this kind of movement on scaffolding ladders where, where guys turn into monkeys and they're just like on a monkey bars going through everything. It, it, it does get insane. Using ladders and planks the way they need to be is really important. What they're doing on the right side is, is just very dangerous, as you know. Oh. Well, look at this one here. He's, not only has he got this... I think it's up against some electrical wires to boot. Now you'll see the pattern that is happening is this. Number one, they believe that these people at the bottom of the ladder are making it okay. It is okay for me to put a ladder on boxes to have two schmucks at the bottom of the ladder holding the ladder for a larger schmuck on top to stand. Somehow that makes it good. It does not. We're not showing these pictures to you just to make you laugh, but to show you a pattern of insanity that people actually believe that if I just hold it at the bottom, it will be okay. With that kind of height, you won't be able to hold it when it starts to fall over. That The guy at the bottom, the leverage, he just doesn't have it. It will tip, and that guy is falling to his death. Um, right picture, they're on a roof that's slanted, all right? And they, they've kind of put a ladder up so they can get to the top. Fall protection is an issue. Ladder is the issue. You just got it all going all around. Other factor that you'll see is with these, is these ladders a lot of times, where the, if the circumstances are really dangerous, these guys are not looking to get somewhere and then to get off the ladder. They're looking to do work at the top. That is considered a work platform, and you would need fall protection for that. So these guys are double popped. You're going to get one for not securing the ladder and no fall protection. You're looking anywhere up to the 30s with those two big citations. All right. As we always say at the end of our webinars, call us today if you have any questions. If you're a current client, call us if you have something that we want to see some pictures on. Send us some pictures. We promise you we won't use them in our webinars. These are not pictures that we find on our job sites. Those are all confidential. But the logic of it is this. If you do want us to come out and take a look as a client, great. If you're not a client, we'll come out and do a free on-site evaluation at no charge for you just to give you an idea about where we're going. All right. So we are at the uh, time of our webinar where we uh, answer some questions. Um, Sam, what do you, while we wait for some of them to come in here, what are some of the questions that you get out there often from clients that – uh, might the, address here. The, the most questions that I've had recently are um, from, of course, painters uh, who are painting the sides of uh, large buildings or houses, and um, there's nowhere to tie off the ladders. Um, is it okay uh, to throw a rope over the top of a house or over a building, securing it to a tree or some sort of rail on the other side? 
uh, is that acceptable? That, that is acceptable because what you're doing is you're going to strap this ladder into the to, to a tree so the ladder doesn't budge. So that fulfills the law. But if they're going to be working on the top of that ladder as a work platform, you got to throw a second rope over the top of the house and yo-yo him up so that he won't fall to his death. I mean, that is a problem. And you'll see in that picture on the right that just popped, that U bracing that goes at the top of the ladders that kind of keeps them at bay is something that will help out quite a bit. Okay, we got a question here. It says, uh, there is a requirement to have a ladder in utility trenches. Is there any particular requirements for this ladder? A frame okay. Uh, this ladder can be in the utility trenches. Obviously, you got to have one in so they can get in, exit and, 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 and get in and get out. But my question to you is this: If it's a, if it's an A-frame ladder, how are you utilizing that? Is it closed, leaning against the wall? If that was the case, the answer would be no. That that isn't because you can't use an A-frame ladder unless it's open completely. You really want to do an extension ladder in those circumstances. And remember, the top rung must be three feet above the landing. You know, we haven't really said that in this webinar, but that's an important piece, especially when you're in a trench. And it must be secured. I don't care if you put in big stakes at the top. If it's dirt, if it's concrete, you got to find something to secure it to. Okay, Sam, and what, what other types of questions do you get out um, of I was um, I was asked a question the other day. Um, if we're using a ladder on uneven ground. Um, there are supports that you can buy uh, to add to the ladders. Is this a compliant um, uh, method? Uh, it is a compliant method as long as these the manufacturer accepts them. And so that's a weird one because you're at Lowe's, you see this ladder extension, and does it properly brack onto it. With the endless amounts of ladders and the endless amount of extension tools, it is difficult for me to say flatly, wholly, yes, those are acceptable because I don't know which one they're using. But generally speaking, if the manufacturer is is designing it, then yes. So you might want to contact the manufacturer of the ladders for that problem. They probably have a solution for you that you can do. All right. Uh, that We don't have any other questions coming in at this point. Sam, any others that you might want to think of real quick? Or? Um, not, no, I can't think of any at the moment. It's a pretty easy topic, isn't it, guys? Okay. Um, just a quick reminder, next month with the holidays and all, we will not be doing a safety webinar. So um, it'll be until January till we have our next presentation. So we'd like to thank all of you for joining us here uh, in these presentations any all year long and look forward to uh, seeing you guys again next year in these. Uh, Michael, any other comments that you have before we close out? Well, thank you for attending, and I want you to know that uh, uh, these ladders are used like this more often than you think. You might be thinking your guys don't use ladders like this, but I'm telling you, they do get crazy with them. Be careful out there. These ladders do create problems for us all the time when it comes to people just getting stupid with the ladders. Uh, but I want you to know that we appreciate what you guys do for us, and my office team is here for you. If you have any questions, you can just call in. We'd be glad to help you. That's all I got, Rick. All right. Well, thanks, folks, and uh, we'll see you next year. See ya.